Okay, so we're gonna either, uh, you don't wanna grab sleeves, pull guard. Uh, I don't like cross collar and sleeve, you know, uh, I don't like same side collar sleeve. Like, I, I like those, but I, like, my number one favorite thing to do is pull guard controlling the bottom and the top. I wanna control both. And the way I like to do that is either grabbing a collar and then going right into like how I, you always show you guys how we swing like, a, like on a tree vine and then you grab the bottom pants and you get into the Delahiva right away, right? But another way, like um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a guard player by any means, I'm not a guard player. I like to take down, right? And I like to be on top. Uh, if I fight a guy that is better at me, at me than takedowns, then obviously I have to play guard and, and I trust it in that sense. But I will never, um, me personally, I will do my favorite thing and that's takedowns, right? And then I go on top. Um, but you obviously, like I said, what if I fight a guy like a D1 wrestler? Gee's different, but still, I'd rather like, okay, like I don't even wanna mess with the stand-up, let me just wrap him up on bottom, sweep him, make him feel stupid, and then submit him, right? So like when I'm here, um, when I pull guard, sometimes you gotta learn how to pull guard, right, in different ways. So in that guard pull that I always show you guys, the cross collar, the cross step, and then the swing into the del heba, that's the best. That's the best because it off balances him. It makes you be in front of him, and then right when you pull the collar and you take that angle, it makes him have to follow you. And then that's why you, like, you get your guard going and he can't blitz you. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a little bit of a different guard pull. We're still gonna get the cross collar, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit our butt on the ground to make it so that we pull guard. Just so everyone knows, for um, tournament purposes, you can't just do this. Like you shake hands with a guy, you go and you go like this. <laughs> you know, it won't work like that. The, the ref will look at you, he'll be like, uh, I don't remember it, but he'll say something like, come uh, Paro, there you go, paro, and then boom, bring it back in, right? So what, what, what we're gonna do is we need a grip. You always need a grip. Number one, if you get a grip, you have attachment to them. So let's say like there's no rules, it's jungle rules, and you don't have no grips and you pull guard, it's okay, but then Scott will blitz me because I have no grips. So it's better to get a grip, whether it be a belt grip, a collar grip, a cross collar grip, right? Sleeve grip, pull guard, doesn't matter. You have to get a grip. So I think the best grip to get is cross collar. That's my favorite. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna maybe reach, open, Cross collar, here, right near the shoulder. You don't want to get too low because then there's not that strong of a pull. Scott has more of a posture. If the hand's closer to the shoulder and the neck, it controls more of the upper body. So we're just going to be here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to look to sit, like just a fast sit. Like sort of just like you're here, and you just like sit on your butt, put your hand on the ground, right? Here. Now right from here, we don't want to keep this extension, right? You want a little bit of a bend, but not only that, but like right when you do this, I want to right away scoot inside, and then I want to get right to my delicato. So my leg's going to go around the ankle, my hand's going to grab the pants, and my foot is going to go right up to the shoulder here, just like this. And this is our delicato, this is how we're going to pull guard, okay? And so let's just get here, and then let's just reset, and then we'll go back, okay? So we're going to go here, and then for example, Scott would go, right? So we'll just go one time each, back and forth. Maybe in the beginning, you could go two times each, back and forth, just so you can get more of a rhythm. Um, but it's just going to look like this, guys, okay? So we're going to be here, right here, you can even do this. Hand and knee, sit on the butt, and then swing inside. This is fine too. Ooh, I, I did not pick this one up fast enough, and it almost got caught, and that would have been bad. So you sometimes if I put the foot on the hip, I use this for rotation. Because sometimes if I do this, this is okay, but me personally, like when I do this, like I, I mean I guess it's okay, I guess it's fine. But like I always just find my foot on the hip and then I use this to rotate me. I grab the pants and then I go to the collar, uh the shoulder right here. Right, or like behind here. But like just for today, let's do this. Okay? And then one more time. So here. He's like that. Alright? One last time. So just back and forth for two and two. Here. Right here. Just like that, guys. Easy, simple. No one don't do this. No one. So don't pull guard, guys. Don't pull guard here, do this and keep your arm extended or even worse, don't pull guard and lay down and do this. Like get your leg right here because then the knee's gonna right away knee cut, bomb. And then you're gonna be like, this sucks. So right away, if you're here, you get down here, boom. You use this collar to pull you and you lift the leg up right away. Regardless of what Scott does, if he jumps in with a flying knee or whatever, like just lift the legs up and you'll catch him as long as your legs don't get caught on bottom. If they get caught on top, whether it be a Z guard, or like a Z cross, like a knee shield, or, or a, you know, uh, an ankle, like different, like man, it doesn't matter. 
as long as he doesn't stuff your legs and start to pass you with a knee cut. That's the worst. So when you're here, it, just think, I gotta get on my back and I gotta lift the legs up, right? So just, boom, got a heave up, and we can start going from here, okay? Guys, back and forth, real easy warm up. All right, let's do it. Ready, one, two, three. Okay, so guys, just, uh, just one thing, all right, that I was uh, mentioned was, right, like uh, sometimes what happens is both guys or girls double guard food, right? So that means Scott is gonna do the exact same thing as me. We both sit on our butt and we're both trying to play guard because we both like guard. Sometimes that happens, right? So in most tournaments, they'll give you about maybe 20 seconds for you guys to fight, 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 and for one person to get that bottom position and one person to get the top position. If it doesn't happen, normally they reset it, they stand you back up, you both get a warning, and then we go from there. And then after about three warnings, the fourth one is double DQ, right? Uh, but normally it doesn't get to that point. Normally someone decides like, all right, I'll man up and I'll get on top, you know what I mean? Um, but, right, so if you're on bottom and you choose to play guard, you double guard pull, boom, whoever comes on top gets an advantage, all right, okay? Um, boom, so here we go. So guys, we're gonna, we're gonna go from guard. So a, a couple people are asking me like, man, like, I like to grab cross collar and sleeve and pull. I like to, um, wa wa you know, one hand and then just pull, like, you know. But sometimes you need to be fast, guys. Sometimes, like, you don't have time to, like, um, to, like, to pull guard, like, like with, like, beautiful grips and, and get your, like, ooh, okay, I'm gonna get delicate with the, you know, with the, with the foot on the shoulder and it's gonna be sick, you know. But, like, sometimes it won't be like that. Because sometimes if I'm fighting, for example, I was just talking to Taylor about this. If I'm fighting like Scott, for example, Scott's a wrestler, he's fast. If I mess with him with grips, if I start to fight with him with grips, he's gonna just like right away. He knows I wanna pull guard. He knows he can take me down. So he's gonna try as fast as he can to get something on me before I sit on my butt. So that's why if some of you are wondering like why, why is it seem like a weird guard pull, it's just different. You just haven't seen it yet. It's just, we just call it like a fast guard pull, like a, you know, it's like a shotgun guard pull. Like you gotta go fast and get those legs up right away and play guard, don't let them get two points and then go from there, okay? Uh, so let's go, we'll play in the De Hiva. We'll, we pulled guard, we got De La Hiva, and we got our foot on the shoulder, okay? Just like this. Guys, the other, uh, this hand that's on the pants, uh, try to grab it like this, okay guys? Four fingers here, no thumb inside. For some reason, they, they give a penalty or whatever, it's stupid. But just put your finger outside. You can, you can use it to like open up the, the cuff and then do this and then like turn the grip so it's like it, um, it uh, closes the slack, okay? So I'm gonna be here, Della Hiva, foot on the shoulder and then I'm gonna have the cross collar over here, okay? So I like this, this is great. But sometimes what happens is guys start to use this hand and they start to push on this leg here because they start to open up my delicate hook, right? And then like obviously they'll circle the hand in and then look at this, like he has like great grips to move, all right? So whenever I'm here, regardless of the foot is here, 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 wherever it's at, always keep it up here though as much as you can. And Uncle Dave was asking like, oh, but Professor, why can't I put it here? I just feel Taylor can just circle his hand real easily. So maybe with this collar grip, you need to pull a little bit more and then push the shoulder a little bit more. So you can get more of that rotation rather than if like Scott is like straight ahead of me, like it's easy for him to just circle the hand, right? But if I start to pull and kind of like push here, it's just a little bit harder. Another thing Uncle Dave is you can use your, your heel and your toes and you gotta kind of like, like wall it, you know, create a wall against, okay? But what we're gonna do is like, not this one really we're worried about because honestly, every time he circles this one, if I have a cross collar grip and delicate and pants, like all I really have to do is, is like kind of kick his leg out or do the guard recovery where the foot goes in between. Like if he's trying to knee cut us, like when we're here, like if Scott goes circle Frank, like when you're here, like if he starts to like move, like, like, you know, I can just like keep it out here or I can keep it here and start to kick him away. If he does end up stepping over it, right? I can end up like circling back and then get regaining my guard back. So I don't find that to be an issue, not so much. It's this one I find to be an issue. When he starts to push my hook off from here, I don't like this, right? Especially if he starts to underhook it, because then you can do a throw by pass, and even if I have the grip, it's worse. I, I gotta let go and move, you know? So when I'm here, whenever guys start to mess with my shin, I always grab a cross sleeve. I let go of the collar, and I grab a cross sleeve. And what I do is I need to open my Della Hiva hook just for a second, and I'm, yeah, grab it, grab it. And I'm gonna pull towards me and kick, right? And I'm gonna do this. And then I can get my Della Hiva hook back. But right from here, what I like to do is I like to do two on one. I think two on one is super strong. And um, I think that if you know what to avoid, it's super difficult for the guy on top to do anything. I remember there was a guy that used to train here a long time ago um, and he used to play two on one a lot, a lot. And literally like it, it, it'd be like one of the worst things ever because you can literally knee cut past someone. 
Like, let's say I'm here, and like, let's say Scott does like knee cut passing right here. Look, and face me, Scott, pass and face. Here. He can never face me if I have these grips. Ever. You know, ever, ever. Even if we, like, let's say, well, uh, Scott, like, uh, we start to, uh, let go that grip, let go that grip, and we start to stand up, like, start to stand up, start to stand up, face me, face me, face me. He can never face me. This hand's here, right? I can, he can never face me from here. And I can start to grab a single, sorry, Scott, sorry. I can start to grab a single from here. I'm here. Scott maybe starts to push my face away, to keep me away, like sitting or sitting out yeah, like this. From here, I can use a hit, and I can start to like go for shots. Like it's such a good grip to have. It can never face you if you do it the right way, right? But what we're gonna learn today is this, guys. We're gonna be here, here, right when they put the hand on the shin. I cross grip, I break, I go back to Delikiva, but then right away this hand, I'm gonna flick the wrist, right? Um, it's like this, right? Boom, like that. The reason why I do that, guys, and I got, man, this is a sick detail. I got taught this by uh, Michael Leary Jr. He showed me this. Andre always talks about it, professor. Flick the wrist, it's the sickest thing ever. Because now you're creating another wall. It's always about walls and, and keeping them from doing what they want. Like, this is my wall here. So every time Scott tries to circle, like Scott can always circle that hand, right? But this is the fight. This is the fight. He's worried about all this, but I already know what I need. I need this. I need this here, and I need this here, this, always. Every time see, they're super strong and they end up beating my wall, like they beat my wall and they grab my belt or my pants or my collar, something like that, I cannot no longer do the arm drive. Maybe I can like somehow like wrist lock them, you know what I mean? But like we can't wrist lock that white belt, so it's like, why even try? Maybe you can like just accidentally, do, you know what I mean? But like, no, don't do that. So I'm gonna be here. So instead, when he grabs me, you have to break it. So we're gonna go two on one. We're gonna break it here. We're gonna circle the grip, and then we're gonna re-grab the tricep, and every time this is gonna be the, our grips right here. So the first thing we're gonna do, guys, from this position, man, I love this. This is the best. We're just gonna learn a basic triangle. The most basic thing you can learn from here. Maybe some of you have seen it already, all right? But let's review. I think, I think this is a great one. The second one is gonna be off of this position. It's the best, all right? But all we're gonna do from here is we're gonna let go of the foot and we're gonna put it right on the hip here, right? We're gonna start to create a little bit of space by kicking them away and then creating an angle, right, from here. So you see this leg right here that's like this? You can keep this leg here, but most likely, Scott's gonna circle it inside, right? Exactly, from here. You can circle back in and re-extend like this. And obviously, look what we have, guys, all day. We have our triangle all day, right? But let's go hit this reaction. It's a super easy reaction from here, but Scott's gonna circle the hand inside He's gonna grab my bottom pants. Uh, yeah, exactly. You see how he couldn't grab it with this hand? I don't allow him. And he's gonna push it down. Go ahead, Scott, push it down. Right, because he can pass my guard, right? Maybe. So, when he does this, I'm gonna really extend my grip and pull. And right when Scott tries to use this hand to push the leg down, it opens up the space on the shoulder. As I do this, I'm gonna start to whip back around. I'm on my side, I whip back around, and I chop like this. After I chop, I continue to pull but I need to let go of the tricep so I can uh, close the gap, not with my hand in it. So I let go and I grab my shin right away. Because if you have this, guys, you can just chill, not chill, but it's better than doing this here, right? Because then exactly. So when you're here, right away, just so you don't have to like fully lock it if you're not flexible enough, grab your shin. Because then that way you can continue to push, shimmy, shimmy, angle, angle, and then secure under, okay? And then let's always finish the triangle with the arm bar, all right? So we're gonna turn the palm up to the sky, rotate the wrist, no gi style, and we're gonna start to lift our hips. And then we're gonna get the arm bar with the triangle. Don't ever do this. Only if you have short time left and they're fighting it, don't ever do this. Here, you can, right? But this, there's no point in opening your triangle and loosening it when you can just do the exact same arm bar with the triangle lock. He doesn't tap, he's super fighting it. You go back to the triangle, but you never lose the grip, okay? So, Boom. So right when he puts this, guys, person on top, just put the hand and just put it on the shin, okay? We're gonna grab the sleeve, open the Delahiva, kick and pull, boom. Go back to Delahiva. Right from here, we're gonna use this hand and we're gonna circle the grip, and then we're gonna grab the tricep. So we let go of the pants and we grab the tricep. Guys, where the tricep is, there's always like a material, like this big material, even if they have a tight gi on, there's still, you can always grab this material, all right? And then now from here, here's the, here's the positioning of everything is pulling and pushing, right? 
and using your elbow like this. But remember, we can't just stay here, okay? If we do this, we gotta start to like, you know, move and create like different angles from here. But to hit the triangle, which is very basic, let's just go right here. Keep this grip, really pull on the tricep and really extend this wrist. And it's not so much like this, it's more of, same thing like I told you guys with this grip, how you do this, here, it's the same thing. This is doing this, but it's not done. I still need to like, kind of like, push it away like, like this, like here, right? So the De La Hiva, foot goes on the hip, extend, 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 rotate to the side. Right when Scott feels like this one's out of the picture, that one's in the picture, we're gonna rotate back around and we're gonna go over the shoulder and catch behind the neck. Right when we catch behind the neck, we push the arm across and we grab our shin. Lock the triangle super tight, try to work the triangle choke, you can't, you can't get it, so you grab the arm. Palm to the sky, lift the hips for the arm bar in the triangle. Okay? One last time, guys. Guys, anyone have any questions? No? Come on in, Andres. Come on in, Patty. Yeah, come on in, come on in. Carlisle, come on in, Park. Carlisle, come on in, Park. Come on. Come on in, Park. Come on. Carlisle. Alright, so I'm here. Hey, everyone. Carlos? Bro, if you guys ever get to train with Carlos, bro, he will smash you. He's sick. Alright, alright. Brown belt. Brown belt, but should be red belt. All right, so I'm here. Boom, right here. I break the grip, boom, back to De La Hiva. Grab the tricep, flick the wrist, keep him away. Here, Ex put the foot on the hip, extension, circle. Catch the neck, push the arm, grab the shin, lock. Grab the wrist, palm up to the sky, lift the hips, okay? Guys, anyone have any questions? You good? Yeah, Brenda. Yeah, uh, yeah, the reason why I let go of it and I put it back on, I put it on the hip is just to create extension. So I can make the person feel like they're doing this. Here, and when they do this, the reason for that is the hip. The foot is on the hip. So when they do this, they're like, okay, I need to get rid of this because I don't have posture. So they want to get rid of it. So when they do this, that's their mistake, and then you catch the triangle. You know? Yeah. What happens if they're posturing up? Do you just lift up your hips higher? You kick their leg out. You got to kick their leg out. Yeah. If they're posturing up like this, super hard, and you feel like they're way stronger than you like this, kick their base out, like boom, and then they're gonna be like down, you know? Yeah, JJ. Uh huh. Right leg. They grab my right leg and they don't mess with my other leg, my my left leg on the hip, correct? Can you show me? Can you come? Here? Can you show me? Here. So this one, they would grab it. Gotcha. And then they start like going to this yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from here, it's a little bit different. If they start okay. to do this, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. If they start to do this, just think, right? They're going that way, right? So let's make them go that way, but let's create a wall in front of them. You can, it, it, it's so uncomfortable for someone to do this. Imagine you're fighting someone, but you're always like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this sucks, you know? So JJ, so you're telling me this, right? Your hands, or this hand. Your hands going this way. This hand, you're like, okay. You want this leg, okay? So if you're doing this, it's already awkward because I'm pushing your hip. But let's say you do. You're doing this one, right? You're here, and you start to go here, like this, like this. Man, if I just start to push your arm this way, like you can never face me, you know? So to answer your question, if they do end up doing this, right, from here, like yeah, like something like that, like go ahead. I just kind of like kick the leg out, and I'll just start to like you know, start to come up from here. Oh, it's okay. just redirection, redirection. Yeah. But the number one thing is never allowing them to bring this arm back in and stopping, so stopping it. Always pull and direct, pull and direct. Like face me far, face me, face me, face me, face me. That's the game, that's it, right? Thank you. But, yeah, I will win, I will win the game. All right, let's do it guys, ready? One, two, three.